and good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome and introduce Dr. Robert Murphy, Executive Director of the Haiti Institute for Global Health and the John Philip Fair Professor of Infectious Diseases here at Northwestern Steinberg School of Medicine, who addresses the latest COVID news and answers your COVID questions right here on the Haiti Institute for Global Health's Facebook page every Tuesday and Thursday. And today, Dr. Murphy will be answering your questions and addressing the latest COVID headlines through today, the 7th of April. And we invite you to continue to submit your questions to us, should you have them, via email at globalhealthinstitute at northwestern.edu. And leading the discussion again today is our student research assistant, Sophie Buskowski. So Sophie, I now turn it over to you. Thank you, Kristen. Hi, Dr. Murphy. Good morning. So now for some updated COVID statistics. In the United States yesterday, we almost had 50,000 new positive cases with approximately 49,329 reported positive cases. We are seeing a seven day average of 29,711. And we are unfortunately seeing a slight, de slight increase in cases over the last 14 days. Our hospitalization and death rate has fortunately continued to decrease. In Illinois, yesterday, we saw 2,176 positive new cases, and the death rate and hospitalization rate are both decreasing significantly in Illinois, but we are seeing a 32% increase in cases over the last 14 days in Illinois. Um, what, do these, what can you tell us about these numbers, Dr. Murphy? Well, um, it's no surprise uh, since uh, it's well over a month now. Um, you know, month and a half that uh, most of the mask requirements indoors and everything were lifted. Also, the vaccine requirements getting into uh, many restaurants and stuff were stopped or they're not mandated anymore. Some restaurants still do it, um, which I think is a good idea. But um, but anyhow, so, uh, you know, it's no surprise that we're seeing this increase and it's happening all over other countries that have done the same thing. Canada, uh, Mexico, uh, Europe, uh, Australia, you know, you're seeing this, this uptick now, and it's all due to this relaxing of the mitigation measures. Um, so the death rate is going down, the hospital rate is going down, because remember, those are the last metrics that improve. And so that's really looking back over like one to three months ago. Uh, what was going on. So that's getting better, but now the cases are going up. So you'll see those deaths and hospitalization continue to go down, but then they will level off and maybe they'll go up a little bit too. But it's, it's still just a fraction of what it was before. But there's some question about exactly how big the, uh, this increase really is. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Yeah, absolutely. And now for you know, jumping right in, how many COVID shots will the U.S. need? The FDA panel is to discuss what's ahead for the fall. What can you tell us about this meeting that the FDA had? So the FDA Advisory Committee for Vaccines met yesterday, and they didn't really come up with anything new. Um, they do wreck the, the, the fourth dose or the second booster, that means the same thing now. You have your two shots up front, then your first booster. Now the second booster, four months later uh, or longer, is recommended. Uh, we don't have too many other options because the monoclonal antibodies aren't working that good anymore. And uh, there is the oral therapies. One of them doesn't work that good, the molnupiravir, but the Pfizer one, the Paxlovid, works pretty good. Um, but we're, we've kind of got our options limited. And um, um, it, it, it's basically, it, the, there's not much of a downside uh, for giving this booster. But what they really talked about at this meeting from what I've just read summaries of the meeting is that you know there's gotta be a plan in place for a next version of the vaccine. And so I thought that they would get some preliminary data presented to them, but th that apparently is not the case. There's very little new data that was presented. So there is a plan now that uh, they're gonna have these, uh, um, they wanna have something in place by the fall. Uh, and uh, even before that, uh, in, uh, in by June, uh, they, they want more of a firm plan uh, of what is going to happen with the next version of the vaccine. Because just 
continuing boosting with this current vaccines is not going to be enough. I mean, that is just going to work even less well than it works now. It hardly protects against infection now. It does protect against hospitalization and death. So that's why, you know, we're continuing to recommend it. But uh, it doesn't, doesn't prevent much. It, it, it doesn't prevent you from getting COVID. And these new variants are highly, highly contagious. And now with nobody wearing masks anymore or not being mandated, we're gonna see a lot more. So that's basically what they said. So um, it was a little disappointing, but at least it is a plan in uh, working on a second version. Uh, you know, with the flu, there's a new vaccine every year. It's a completely different vaccine every year. And so I think you're gonna see the same thing with COVID. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully this helps what our next headline goes into, which is a new COVID mystery. Mm. What can you tell us about what is going on in the United States versus globally? Um, the, uh, the U.S. has, of, of our peer high-income countries, which is primarily Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand, we, we are not seeing as much of a surge as those other countries. Now, um, why is that? There's two, two theories um, that one says that more Americans got Omicron, the BA1, than the, the peoples in the other countries. And that is protecting them from the second surge right now, this little uptick. Uh, the other is that the testing is so low now. Testing sites are closing uh, and people that are... Uh, are worried that they have it or just going to the pharmacy or getting their tests from the government and uh, and they're getting sick and they their doctors are telling them, you know, what you can do if you need Paxlovid, um, uh, you know, the, the oral tablet or whatever. And if you don't have the PCR test, it's not getting reported as a case. So we either have more immunity, or we're just not testing and having it reported. It's probably a combination of both of those things uh, that explains why we're not um, seeing more of an uptick in the United States. So it's probably fake. There's plenty of new cases out there. Um, and like myself, I had COVID two weeks ago and uh, uh, my case is not reported because I never had a PCR test. You know, so I don't count in the statistics. How many people are like me? Probably quite a few. Yeah, hopefully this number, you know, is more reflected um, with the new cases. And now for our third and last COVID headline, the CDC director says that she, quote, really would encourage, quote, second boosters for older people and many with chronic conditions. What can you tell us about this encouragement with the second booster? Well, I, I, I pretty much already said it. There's not much else we can do. We could just keep boosting with the same vaccine. It does protect against serious disease and death. Um, and the, the vaccine effectiveness is starting to wear off. Doesn't help much with new infections. And ultimately it's not gonna work at all. So they've got to come up with a new vaccine. Hence the, story, the first story. Did you want to show the visual? Daily average cases per capita. So this is adjusted for population. And you can see it's quite clear in the red line here that the U.S. case is being reported. These are the reported cases, so not the cases like mine, not the cases diagnosed at home. But France, Italy, and the United Kingdom have much, much higher rates of new cases um, than uh, the United States. I mean, they're over... Um, all those Italy, uh, Netherlands, and France are all above 150 cases per 100,000. So, and we're way down at the bottom. So um, that's pretty dramatic. Okay. And Kristen, can you go to the second? Um, yeah. yeah, there we go. And this oh, is the daily yeah. average test. This is, but this could be explained by the daily average tests per capita. So the United States is in the red. We're hardly testing anybody. Uh, the other countries are testing much more frequently and reporting the results, uh, it, with the, the exception of the Netherlands, which is more like us. 
So um, we're definitely not testing a lot. People have either stopped testing or the test at home strategy is very successful and people are just testing at home, mostly having mild disease and uh, none of it gets reported. Yeah, absolutely. And now for our first COVID question. All right. What does Pepsi do for people with mass, mass cell issues when taking the COVID vaccine? Okay, so Pepsi, you know, people take it for heartburn. Um, and um, uh, it eases heartburn. And uh, they have found in one study, uh, this is an observational study, that um, hospitalized COVID patients who were taking Pepsi were dying at half the rate, 14% versus 27%. This was uh, from uh, the Northwell Health Feinstein Institute for Medical Research. So this is an observation. Um, but with every observation, you know, especially from one hospital system, you really don't, it's, it's really impossible to determine if there's a cause and effect here. We don't know if the Pepsid is preventing the deaths or those, uh, those people that live you know, more of them had heartburn, you know, for, for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, 27% death, you know, that's pretty high. I mean, that's like twice as high as our hospital has. It. So it's like, it all depends on the patient population and the level of care. I'm, I'm assuming this has a very good uh, 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 care here. But um, you, we can't really say if it's a cause or effect. So... It's an interesting observation. You know, people can look at it more thoroughly. But, uh, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, there were many treatments out there that they said the same thing. And it didn't really pan out once everything is controlled. So you have to do a study. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now for our second COVID question. What are the ingredients in, in the Novavix COVID vaccine, including Matrix M, and how is it different from the mRNA vaccine? Yeah, Novavax is the company. Uh, and they have a vaccine um, uh, called uh, Covavax or Nuvavax, Nuvavaxavid. And <clears throat> its approval is pending at the FDA right now. And it should be soon. They had some manufacturing issues. Uh, it should have been approved, you know, nine months ago. But there were some issues with the, in the manufacturing. And uh, that's all resolved. And the vaccine is approved in several countries now, including Canada. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's based on an older technology of vaccine, and it has nothing to do with message RNA, mRNA. That's the Pfizer and Moderna mechanism of action. The Johnson & Johnson is a viral vector vaccine. Um, it's also an older technology, but we know that the, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has more side effects than the mRNA vaccines. So the mRNA vaccines are the most sophisticated. You know, this little molecule goes in, it turns on the cell to make spike protein, and uh, that starts the immunologic reaction. Novavax is more a classic uh, design where they, they're delivering um, the uh, molecular uh, parts of the spike protein in an adjuvant that makes it appear uh, more intense to the immune system. Many vaccines have adjuvants. So this matrix M is their adjuvant. Anyway, um, it's just a completely different but older technology, and it appears to be just as effective. Wonderful. That's good news. Mm -hmm. And now for our third COVID headline. This individual is 68 with high blood pressure and moderate asthma. They work in public-facing job. They're fully vaccinated with Moderna and had their Moderna booster in October of 2021. They are planning to get their second booster as soon as they can, and they're waiting to hear if they should be mixing it up, maybe potentially with a Pfizer booster. What would you recommend this individual? Yeah, this question comes up literally every day, especially now because the, the vaccine booster, uh, second booster is, a, is approved. So there's, there's one NIH-sponsored study that looked at uh, switching the vaccines, which we call mix and match. And they showed that if you switch from one vaccine to another, you had a slightly increased um, laboratory evidence of immune uh, improvement to the uh, uh, immune protection against the vaccine. Strictly a laboratory result, 
not a clinical result, um, but it's suggestive that maybe you get a broader, bigger response. Um, it was particularly um, relevant for the Johnson & Johnson to the mRNA vaccine, the Moderna one. Uh, so anyway, but it, there, it really doesn't matter. And the recommendation is to just take, go and get a vaccine, tell them it's a booster because the Moderna booster dose is half the dose of the original one. Um, and uh, I am actually recommending that uh, people like this uh, mix and match. Like this one had, this person had three shots of Moderna, go get the Pfizer. If the Pfizer is not available, just take another Moderna one. It's not a, there's not like a huge deal here. Uh, I, on the other hand, had three Pfizer shots. And when I'm uh, uh, recover completely from this COVID that I have, I'm going to go get uh, the Moderna uh, booster. So um, I, I don't think it hurts if you can do that. Otherwise, just take what's available. Wonderful. And now for our last COVID question. This individual would just like to know if they can attend an outdoor Cubs game. Um, should they be wearing a mask? Can they be eating? There's no social distancing. So what do you recommend for individuals going to like outdoor crowded events? Well, Cubs openers today. So, um, you know, it's a very relevant question in Chicago here, uh, particularly on the north side. But, you know, the Cubs games, you know, they're outside. Um, there's a lot of fresh air blowing around. There's not much COVID going around. These people are vaccinated. These people wear masks when they're outside. They should be fine. Wonderful. Enjoy, enjoy the game. Yeah. Well, those were all of our COVID questions for today. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Thank you.